Hey everyone, I'm uh, kicking it a little bit old school today. Uh, a little voice over gameplay for this video. I might do a few more of these uh, voice over gameplay videos just for um, the sake of saving me some time. That doesn't mean I'm not going to be on camera, of course. There's going to be plenty of videos that I'll be on camera for between live streams and podcasts and here's the news episodes when I feel like there's enough news to actually make one. There wasn't that many t that much news today that seemed interesting anyways, interesting enough to make a video. But I do want to talk about an interesting thing happening with a game. And it's not the first time this has happened, but it's the first time it's happened this blatantly in a long time. But before I do, I have to remind you because, hey, we only have like 24 hours left or so by the time this video publishes to enter our current giveaway. That's right, 24 hours left to enter. Uh, and the requirements are quite simple. We do have a link that you need to click on to enter. It's going to ask for your email. Uh, you know, it, it, it's a pretty big giveaway. We got $200 or the stuff we're giving away, including a $100 Nintendo Switch, PlayStation, Xbox, or Steam gift card, and two $20 Xbox, PlayStation, um, <laughs> Switch, or Steam gift cards. Man, I don't know why I was stumbling over to the Switch part there. Uh, and, yeah, we're also giving away a copy of Monster Hunter Rise. So, uh, a pretty big giveaway for you guys. $200 worth of stuff. Uh, we're also uh, on our road to 70 k uh, and what's interesting is there's kind of an interlocking sector with this because when you go to enter that giveaway, you'll see one of the ways to enter to get extra entries is to be subscribed to the channel. And what's cool is if we hit 70,000 subscribers, I'll be giving away a Nintendo Switch. So there's really like a double incentive to hit that thing. Now you might have a Switch and not care about that uh, at 70K, and that's fine. I totally understand that. Uh, but it's still kind of a big deal. Maybe you have a friend, a sibling, a parent, somebody who uh, maybe could use a Switch that maybe might not be willing to buy it for themselves. So you just never know. You know, there, there's always that, that possibility out there. Uh, otherwise, yeah, let's get into this video. You see... Um, there's a new game that came out across multiple platforms, and today I'm going to be glancing at PlayStation 4. Actually, you know what? Let's just look at everything. PlayStation 4, Xbox, whatever. It doesn't really matter because I don't think it matters which version of the game uh, we look at. Um, and we're talking about Balan Wonderworld. Now, I have not played this game. I want to make that very, very clear. I have not played this game. I have checked out the demo. Uh, the demo... Really wasn't that great, but, you know, we need to uh, try to be fair. Um, it's just a demo. <laughs> uh, but the actual game is out, and there are some reviews. Now, an interesting thing happened with this game where they didn't really give people time to review the game. Review copies went out essentially the day of release. This meant the game would come out, and there would not be any... Um, you know, Metacritic scores, any open critic scores, or anything. There, there would be nothing, uh, n hardly any reviews, hardly any talk about the game from a review perspective. Uh, and when this happens, it usually shows a lack of confidence in the game. And then it's a bit interesting because the person behind Battle in Wonderworld is actually a pretty big name in the industry. Uh, and the game actually had a lot of promise when it was initially announced, but it turns out the final product might not be that great. In fact, initial reviews coming in um, are not good. So here we are uh, just looking at the initial reviews coming in on multiple platforms here. So first up we have for the Xbox uh, Series X, uh, I think, right? No, this is the Switch version, sorry. And you'll see the initial three reviews we got from Digital Trends with a 30 out of 100. Uh, Nintendo Life with a 30 out of 100. Pocket Tactics with a 20, you know, a 20 out of 100. That's really, really horrible. And then go over to Xbox, the, the world of Xbox. We got the Series X here. We see a 47 out of 100 by IGN Italia. It's a little bit higher. A 40 out of VGC. Um, not looking good. Next up, PlayStation 5, which does have a Metacritic of 59. You'll see Multiplayer.it with a 70. Hobby Console, 68. Vandal 55, Noisy Pixel with a 50, IGN France with a 50, Screen Rant with a 40. Um, yeah, there is one positive review here in Video Chums at an 82. Uh, I don't, uh, you know, he says, if you have a soft spot for classic 3D platformers and a manager of game worlds, you'll have a lovely time with Violent Wonder World with a heartfelt story, plenty of uh, cuteness, and a clever costume system. 
And Oodles of Stages to Master. It's one incredible adventure. I'm not here to tell you, by the way, if this is a good game or not, because I don't know. Okay? I'm probably not going to be playing it. And it's funny. Some of the things they, they, they comment here, like the story and all that, are blasted by a lot of reviews. I've read a bunch of these reviews. It's it's kind of funny. Um, over here, uh, we have Bottle and Wonderworld on PC. 65 by Atomics. 60 by PC Invasion. 40 by IGN. 30 by Game Skinny. Uh, and over here on PlayStation 4, we have 50 from God is Geek and 40 from Gaming Bowl. But one thing you're going to notice is, despite getting basically dog shit reviews, and the game only being out for a couple days, we have a ton of positive user scores. Look at this. User score, 8 out, 8 out, 8 .0. User score, 8.6. User score, 7.8. User score, 8.9. User score 7.7. .7. These are all significantly higher user scores than the actual game is getting reviewed. Now, we have seen user reviews and um, critical reviews vary in many different ways. Some where the critic scores are much higher and the user scores much lower, usually from review bombing. Uh, others where, hey, users just generally actually like a game that critics don't. Is this one of those things? Well, let's click and find out. Here we are on Switch. All right, we got the most, it's listed by most helpful, by the way. These are considered the most helpful user reviews. 10, Okimo, definitely an incredible good platformer game, a joyful and colorful game to experience. I can easily recommend this. 17 out of 17 people found that useful. 10, C-Y-T-Y-B-O-L, don't listen to the negative reviews here because these people don't even play this game. This game is actually a good platform game. Seems... Like, maybe that's a real review. Maybe. I don't know. Olani, the first thing I value in a game is, is undoubtedly its gameplay. And in that, Ball in, uh, Ball in Wonder World is promoted with the highest rating. Highest rating in what? A large part of the level created in this game seem to be created in a bizarre way, but at the same time in an extremely clever way. Hidden passages. Because you know, you've never had hidden passages in a platformer before. Uh, Secret Streets and intriguing maps accompany the work that winks at the classic games of past generations in a good way, especially if you love games like Knights or Croc. You'll, you'll also love Island Wonder World. It can be uh, more than satisfied despite everything, and I would say I can confidently recommend it, especially if you're looking for an intriguing, surprising platformer. And the soundtrack's great. All right. Uh, Umari Tulas. Entertaining and nice platform game overall with encouraging puzzle design. See, these actually sound pretty good, but let's just keep going. Uh, so the Artoon, basically one of the best platform games I've ever played. Okay. Uh, whoever this person is, interesting, entertaining platform game. This random X-Y-L-E-N-N-U. Um, this game is charming and a nice platform game. It is in justified attack because of their own only graphics. So someone claiming that the game is reviewed poorly because of the graphics. The graphics are actually praised in a lot of the reviews. Um, Ammonex, I have to admit I'm surprised by the huge upgrades that this game has in other level respects that they use for the demo. There's a lot of cool puzzle ideas here. Um, it Thuy, probably in the recent best platform of the last decade, the most original and surprisingly fun to play. Uh, 40 out of 49, uh, found that you helpful, apparently. Gurren, an emotive game that hit the right spot in a good way. Uh, UGHYC, I love the time that I've passed with this marvelous and colorful game. Almost unique to his genre. Ever hurt. Love so much gameplay of this incredible game. The demo doesn't give the game justice. Buy the game and see for yourself. Kirov. Fuscaro. Oformius. E F H Y N. Best game I've ever played. Best game I've ever played. Okay. And you're going to see a similar story when we go into the user score here. Lots of tens. A ton of tens. It's like the same people. The exact same people across different games. Oh, 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 oh. This game is absolute garbage. We got some zeros popping up near some fours. Um, not as many positives there. We got a uh, Bottle in Wonderland here for PlayStation 5. Again, the same people with some other random usernames saying the same stuff on a different version of the game as if they own this game across multiple versions of the game as we have the same people saying the same shit on the same <laughs> you see what, see what's happening by the way the user reviews are sorted by platform so these rev these user reviews are specific to that platform 
And it just goes, and it goes, and it goes. Do you know what's happening, folks? What happened is, and this is, this is a bit speculative, a bit speculative, but also um, part of this is clearly true. These games have botted user reviews. Botted user reviews. This game, Bottle in Wonderland, across every platform, there are botted user reviews to artificially inflate the user score around launch to try to increase sales at a time when most of the games don't have meta scores or open critic scores because there's not enough reviews in existence. So the idea is to try to get a game to sell through positive user scores. Now, what does this mean? Why would this happen with this particular game? Well, the game wasn't well received with demo, hasn't been well received with the reviews. Um, it's from all accounts, and I know of two people who have given it a try. It seems, according to those people, and I tend to trust their opinions because they they their gaming tastes align with mine, and I like platformers. Um, the game's dog shit. Okay, that's what they said. Not me. Again, I haven't played it. Maybe I will, um, just to see how dog shit it is. But it's interesting to me because the only way that this happens, that I can logically conclude, because this only benefits the people who made the game, is that this, I apologize for making an accusation like this, but it appears to me that the people behind Bottle in Wonderland have paid a company to do bot reviews on Metacritic to artificially inflate the score and try to increase sales. This, by the way, is widely frowned upon on Metacritic and actually against their terms of service, but you obviously have to prove that that happened. I don't know that you could prove it other than seeing some of the same usernames across the same stuff, posting the same comments. It's it, it's embarrassing. Like, this, you know, I, 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 I'm kind of frustrated at seeing this because one thing I appreciate uh, in the gaming industry, and I'm sure you guys can agree, is honesty. Uh, we want honesty. Whether it's from user reviews, whether it's from outlets, whether it's from YouTubers, you know, pe- random people you follow on Twitter, family members, we want honesty, right? We value it in our relationships. We value it in our news coverage. Like, you want the news, and then if you want to hear opinions on the news, you want to hear honest opinions on the news. You don't want to hear canned responses or market speak. You want to, you want to hear that person's interpretation of the truth. And that's what I'm trying to give you here is my interpretation is this company behind Bottle and Wonderworld paid for bots to come in and bot it up and uh, inflate the user scores. Because these user scores are a lot of 10 out of 10. You, you get away from the 10 out of 10. The one 9 out of 10 in here, by the way. This might actually be a legit person, maybe, because it sounds. That is nine out of ten makes me want to think it's the real, but then it's also in a different language, so I can't. I, I don't really understand most of what they're saying. Um, they compare it to Sonic and Mario, but then you get to some of the low reviews. Um, like this game's all right, overall pretty poor with a lot of terrible choices in it, but somewhat has some merits, especially in music and art direction. So again, music praised, art direction praised. But the one review says, hey, reviewers are, 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 are lambasting. Hey, they're not. People like the art and the music. It's not the art and the music. It's the gameplay that's the problem. It's the level design that's the problem. It's just not good, um, according to a lot of people that have played it anyways. I, I think that Balin Underworld, or <laughs> Underworld, Balin Wonderworld, sorry, I want to make sure I get it right, um, is it, it needs to be careful here. The devs behind it and the company, because if they paid and it gets discovered that they paid, they will basically be blacklisted in the entire industry. I sincerely hope that's that's not the case, that they had nothing to do with this, that some independent fan or maybe a family member of a dev or something went ahead and did this of their own volition, and it has nothing to do with the company itself. But honestly, I'm a little bit worried about the people behind this game and, and that... I really hope they didn't do this because this is an industry blackball moment if this is what it appears to be. Again, I hope I'm wrong. But time will tell. Anyways, I'm Nathaniel Rubble Jams from Nintendo Prime. Let me know what you think. You know, do you think this is uh, do you think this is just much to do about nothing? Do you think they didn't pay for it? Because some of those reviews read fine. The English was good. Normally when you have like bots, it's a lot of broken English. So, like, it's possible that maybe people just legitimately love this game. Maybe this is a case of user reviews um, being 
um, much higher than game reviews and, and just gamers disagreeing. But some of these usernames are just so random. And, like, the same users on each thing making, like, the exact same comment across multiple platforms doesn't make sense. I, I, I'm i just saying it just doesn't make sense. And I've done a user review on Metacritic. I know my review did not appear across multiple platforms. I was an Assassin's Creed game um, that I reviewed for Wii U, and I put my opinion in a, in a user review, and it did not appear for the other platforms. I double-checked. So... I know they have to specifically go to the platforms and, and pick this. So it's not like, oh, it's just one comment that's most helpful and it's being spread across all the reviews. No, it's specific to that version. That's another red flag. Is like, specific, I just, oh, it frustrates me to see this happen. You know, it frustrates me to imagine a company potentially being involved in a, you know, a, a scandal like this. With, 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 and maybe they just thought the game is so small. Like, it, it wasn't going to do crazy sales. Maybe they just were hoping to recoup great dev costs or something, right? Like, but the game was pushed recently, obviously, by Square Enix. Uh, and I just, I really hope that they didn't do what it appears that they did. Because this is embarrassing. We shouldn't, we, we shouldn't be seeing this happen. I'm sorry. I, 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 I just... Man. Let me know your thoughts on this down in the comments below. I am Nathaniel RoboJans from Nintendo Prime. I just had to call this out. It, it, it's incredibly frustrating. I, I, ugh. All right, folks. I'll catch you in the next video.